Welcome back to video nine in our series of Kent test preparation videos. Today, we're going to be looking at maths again, and our focus is going to be time or duration problems, which often come up in the Kent test and often catch a lot of children out. So what I'm going to do is we're going to dive straight into a question and I'll explain my kind of top tips and strategies as we go, hopefully making you feel more confident in solving these questions yourselves. So here's my first question. And this question says, Julie sets off to the gym at 7.35 and arrives back home after one hour and 52 minutes. So that's the information. The question is, what time does she arrive home? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually comprehend the question. What are we given? Are we given a start time or an end time? Are we working forwards in time or backwards in time? That's the first thing we need to do. So hopefully it's quite clear that we're working forwards in time. We've got when she left the gym, we've got how long she was there, and now we want to know what time she gets back. So tip number one, do not use column addition or column subtraction. Sometimes it works if you're lucky. It depends on the numbers. A lot of the time it doesn't work. You're going to get a wrong answer. What I do advise is drawing yourself a number line like this. It doesn't have to be super straight. It can just be drawn freehand. I've just got the power of a computer. So I've drawn a straight line. And that's my first thing. Draw a timeline. The second thing is in this timeline, just add any information that we already know. Well, we know at the beginning of my timeline, we know what time Julie set off to the gym. We don't know, and I'm going to mark that with a question mark, what time she got back. But we do know how long she spent outside. So what we're going to do now is use simple jumps to help us find that end of time. And by simple jumps, I mean, don't try and overload yourself with information. Use hours as checkpoints. What do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. Okay, first of all, we're jumping one hour and 52, right? There's a nice easy start here because we can just jump one hour very easily, mark it on our number line. So plus one hour, and we're simply adding an hour to seven. So that becomes 0835. Now all we've left ourselves is the 52 minutes. And here's what I mean by an hour checkpoint. I can tell without having to do any maths that if I try to jump 52 minutes from 8.35, that 35 and that 52, we're going to go into the next hour. It's not as simple as adding 52 and 35, getting 87 and giving an answer of 8.87, because we know time doesn't work like that. We only have 60 minutes per hour. So this is what I mean by hour checkpoints. When you know it's going to go over the next hour, just jump to it. Just jump to that next hour first. Let's make nice, simple jumps. We want to jump to nine o'clock, work out how much that was, because we know there's 60 minutes in an hour. 60 take away 35 means we had a 25 minute jump. And then just reassess the situation. How many of these 52 minutes have we just jumped? Well, we've jumped 25 minutes. So again, how many are left? What do we need to do now in order to get to our answer? Well, it needs to be that 25 plus this next jump makes 52. So with another simple subtraction, whether you do it in columns or you feel more confident doing it in your head, we're working out the difference between 52 and 25. Now I know the difference between 50 and 25 is 25. 52 is two more. That leaves us with a 27 minute jump. Hopefully now you're starting to see the benefits of using hours as a checkpoint. Because if I'm trying to do nine o'clock plus another, another 27 minutes, well, I'm on nine o'clock, so it's very simple. The 27 minutes simply takes place of these two zeros, leaving me with an answer of nine, 27. And that's how I get there. Parents, we're getting a lot of requests at the moment for our tuition. Our spaces are going fast. If you're interested, then get in touch. We're offering a free first week for September signups. Right, we've got the basics now. We're using a number line. We're gonna use jumps, simple jumps, add in information we know. So let's get straight into this question. After a total of 105 minutes at the shops, Paul finally leaves at 17.13 or 5.13 p.m. if you know your a.m. and p.m. times. What time did he arrive at the shops? So as you can probably tell from this one, a bit of comprehension, we're working backwards. We've got the leaving time and we've got the amount and we should be jumping back now to find out what time he arrived. It's no different to the last question other than the jumps are going in a different direction. So let's fill in what we know. We know that he left at 17.13. We don't know what time he arrived. That's what we're working out. But we do know that he spent 105 minutes. Sometimes questions give you time in minutes. Sometimes they are nice and give it to you in hours and minutes. It doesn't really matter. What we can do, if we like working in hours and minutes, because we can use those hour checkpoints, is we can turn this into hours and minutes. So we know 60 minutes is one hour. So that's one hour. And 60 plus 45 
gets us to 105 minutes. So 105 minutes is the same as one hour and 45 minutes. So let's do jumps just like we did before. First things first, I'm going to jump back a whole hour. And I'm going to get myself to, what's one less than 17? 16, 13, or 4, 13 p.m. So I've done my lovely one hour jump. Now, I'm not confident taking 45 minutes off of this because I've only got 13 minutes in the current hour to work with. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my checkpoint. I'm going to jump back 13 minutes. 13 minutes gets me to exactly 16 or 4 p.m. That's nice. But just like last time, I need to work out what my remaining jump is going to be by finding the difference between 13 and the 45 that we were trying to jump in the first place. So again, column addition, if you're not confident, or a simple subtraction in your mind, take away 10, take away three more, leaves us with 32 mints. So we know that our last jump needs to be 32 minutes back in time. Now, if you really wanted to, you could break this down into two jumps as well. You could take off 30 minutes because that's half an hour. In fact, I'm going to do it for this video. Take off 30 minutes. Taking off 30 minutes gets us half an hour before four o'clock, which is, of course, half past three. So 15, 30. And then we can just take off those final two minutes. You do whatever you think is going to break it down enough that you're feeling accurate and confident. You might have done that 32 minute jump like that in your head, but some of you might have appreciated breaking it down further. If we take off two more minutes, so 30 take away two, we're going to be left with our final time, the answer we're looking for, which is of course 15.28 or 3.28 p.m. if you were working in a.m. and p.m. time, 12 hour clock times. And that's it, it really is as simple as that. Simple jumps, add the information and you already know, and we'll get there eventually. Right, guys, stick with me. Let's do one more question together. This one, again, is a little bit different in terms of the information we're given. So it says, Safwan started his homework at 11.49 and finished at 14.36 or 2.36 p.m. How long did he spend on his homework? So you'll notice this time, it's not about finding the start time or the end time. It's actually about finding the duration, the amount of time spent in the middle. And we can do that with exactly the same strategy. So here we go. Timeline, timeline is drawn. Add information you already know. Okay, well, we know he started at 11.49 and finished at 14.36. Right, you ready for this? Simple jumps, use the hours as checkpoints. I'm not going to try to jump there in one go. I'm going to be nice, go nice and simple. So first thing I'm going to do is just jump to the next whole hour, which is 12 o'clock. So thinking 49 plus how much gets me to 60 minutes because 60 minutes is the next hour. Well, we could do some simple mental arithmetic and work out that that's going to be 11 minutes. Okay, and we're keeping track of it because we're writing it on our timeline. Now, the next jump I'm going to do is I'm going to stick in hours, but I'm going to go as close as I can to the hour that we need. And in fact, I'm going to go to this exact hour, 14 o'clock or 2 p.m., because then I know that my final jump will just be in minutes. So I'm going from 12 o'clock, I'm jumping in hours all the way to 14. 12, 13, 14, this is a plus two hour jump. So, so far we've jumped two hours and the 11 minutes. And what you'll notice now is by using this hour checkpoint, again, we're left with a really simple jump at the end. It doesn't really require any working out because it's as simple as looking at the number in minutes because we're already at the hour. So how many minutes is it to get from two to 2.36? Well, of course it's going to be 36. So We've got the jumps there. This is our duration. Now, unfortunately, we can't just draw this and put it as our answer. We're most likely going to be selecting from multiple choice. So we need to do one final thing. We need to add these jumps together to work out what that total duration was. So the first thing I usually do is I look for the minutes. I add all the minutes stuff together. Then I add the hours together if there's more than one and then put it all together at the end. So 36 minutes and 11 minutes. Again, if you're not feeling confident, don't worry. You're in, you're in the test. You've got time. It's your test. If you want to do columns, you can. So adding these together, we get 47 minutes and we know there's another two hours. So our final answer is two hours and 47 minutes. But let's say there was one final challenge to this question and all the answers were just in minutes. And we're thinking, oh, no, none of them have hours. Don't worry. We can turn these hours into minutes, add it onto the 47 and have our answer in minutes as well. So let's have a look at what the answer would be just in minutes. One hour is 60 minutes times that by two, two hours 
is 120 minutes. So 120 minutes plus the extra 47 minutes gives us 167 minutes. So they are our two answers. Doesn't matter how it's presented because we know what to do. We've used timelines, simple jumps, and those hour checkpoints as well. We've been very successful in this video so far. Right, it's your turn. I've added in a little bit more challenge for this question as well, if you were finding it a bit easier. So the question, I'll read it to you, but I want you to answer this and let me know in the comments what you got. Can you draw a number line and solve this in the way we've been solving it today? Rowena gets up at 8 to 10, spends 15 minutes in the shower, 27 minutes getting ready, and 37, 36 minutes having breakfast before leaving. The question is, what time does she leave? I look forward to reading your comments and we'll see you in the next video.